The complex trinomial method for factoring is similar to the simple trinomial method, but it can be used in situations where your a, the numerical coefficient of the first term, is not 1. In both of these cases, we have a numerical coefficient of the first term that is not 1. So let's try using the complex trinomial method to factor them. The first step is the same. To find your a, your b, and your c. In this case, a is 6, b is negative 5, and c is negative 4. Now we have an extra step. What is a c? a times c is 6 times negative 4, so a c is equal to negative 24. The question we ask is a little bit different. Now we are saying, what two numbers multiply to give a c negative 24 and add to give b negative 5? The two numbers that multiply to give negative 24 and add to give negative 5 are negative 8 and positive 3. So we write those, 8, negative 8, and 3. Now we rewrite our expression so that instead of negative 5, we write both of these numbers in a bracket. It looks like this, 6x squared plus 3 minus 8, I like putting the positive one first when I have a positive one, x minus 4. Now, the special things to notice about this are the two numbers that I found as an answer to my question are inside the bracket. Everything else looks the same as it did on the outside of the bracket, except this sign, if it's a minus, has to turn into a plus. Always make this a plus. The next thing I'll do is I'll break this 3 minus 8x into two separate terms. I get 6x squared plus 3x minus 8x minus 4. And what I have done is I have converted my complex trinomial into a four-term grouping. If I already know my grouping factoring method, I can finish this off quickly. The greatest common factor of 6x squared and 3x is 3x. And if I factor out the 3x, I get 2x plus 1. The greatest common factor of negative 8x and minus 4 is going to be minus 4, and if I factor minus 4 out of these two terms, I get 2x plus 1. As I expected in a grouping, the contents of the brackets are the same. Now I can rewrite this 3x minus 4 times 2x plus 1. This is my answer. If I multiply these two binomials together, I will get the original expression. The complex trinomial method is similar to the simple trinomial method at the beginning, and then partway through, it starts looking more like a grouping. But if you know those two methods, it's still easy, and it will always work. Here's another example where the only complication is we have that extra letter. We have the Q and the Q squared involved. Like with the simple trinomial, we can ignore that Q until the end, and then we will still get the right answer. Our A is 2, our b is negative 3, our c is 1, and our ac is 2 times 1, which is 2. Which two numbers multiply to give ac, multiply to give 2, and add to give negative 3, the b? They are negative 2 and negative 1. We rewrite our original expression like this, 2p squared plus, remember this has to be a plus, in a bracket, I put the minus 2 and the minus 1, then the pq, and the plus q squared. I rewrite the entire expression the same way it was, except the minus 3 has now been turned into the plus and the bracket with the two numbers from the answer to my question. Rewriting this, I get 2p squared minus 2pq minus pq plus q squared. And now I'm ready to do the grouping phase of my method. The common factor of 2p squared and minus 2pq is going to be 2p. And when I factor it out, I get a p minus q. And the common factor of minus pq and q squared is going to be minus q 
which gives me inside the bracket p minus q. My final answer, therefore, will be 2p minus q written together in a bracket and p minus q written only once. If I multiply these two binomials together, I will get my original trinomial. So we can see that the complex trinomial method works. It has a couple of extra steps, but once we learn those steps, it is a powerful method that will allow us to factor any trinomial of this form. If you've watched my video on how to factor a simple trinomial, you might recognize this expression. In that video, I proved that this can be factored with the simple trinomial method. But first, you have to factor a negative 1 out of the expression in order to turn minus x squared into x squared and convert it into a simple trinomial. But is there another way? Can we factor this expression with the complex trinomial method? Let's try it. Our a is negative 1. Our b is 3. Our c is 10. And our ac is going to be negative 1 times 10, which means our ac is negative 10. What two numbers multiply to give negative 10, the ac, and add to give 3, the b? The two numbers are going to be 5 and negative 2. Let's rewrite this expression, negative x squared plus a bracket with 5 minus 2 in it, then the xy plus 10y squared. If I break this bracket apart, I get negative x squared plus 5xy minus 2xy plus 10y squared. The greatest common factor of these two terms is either x or negative x. Let's take out an x. And I end up with negative x plus 5y. The greatest common factor of these two terms is either 2y or negative 2y. Let's take out a 2y. And I end up with negative x plus 5y inside the bracket. I can rewrite this as x plus 2y, negative x plus 5y. And if I factor a negative 1 out of this second uh, binomial, I will end up with x plus 2y, x minus 5y, and the negative 1, which is the same answer I had when I factored this using the simple trinomial method.